Okay. So we want to figure out who's spying on... on... the... Hmm. Unfortunately, the map's not exactly the most useful. Maybe I have to go into the building on the opposite side? That does seem entirely possible. Okay. Let's go talk to, um, Edgar Swan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could try going further upstairs. Can I? No. I wonder if I can get into that building. It's like, I don't... I don't want to spend too much time just wandering around, but I would actually love to find out... Or, find out? I'd love to complete every side quest, if possible. For most of them. Nope, this one's no good. There's an unattended fire in there. That's... that's bad. You don't want that. Unfortunately, the quest markers are not exactly the most useful. It's like, it's telling me to go this direction, but as soon as I get over here, it, like, disappears. Blackwell Fauberg. Serious. Okay, so I might have to give up on this for a little while, at least until I can figure out how to get above. Oh, actually, speaking of... Going. This is despicable. Any other... Traveling munchies? There we go. I have this thirst for blood. Oh, jeez. I just robbed her of five shillings. Ah. Okay. This is a bit more... And he's just dead. Okay. I didn't necessarily mean to walk to an area that's wildly overleveled for me, but guess what I just did? Whoops-a-doodle. Anyway, what do we got in here? Yeah, there's more dudes around. I'm just gonna... I mean, it's... Interestingly enough, level doesn't seem to matter apart from just extra level, like, HP and whatnot. This is one of those games where if you wanted to, you could actually just be ridiculously low, low, low level and be totally fine. Which is kind of rad. You know, it means I'm not necessarily disadvantaged. Or, you know... I'm not directly disadvantaged for being under level. It's, it's mostly just like a... Loss of power and a couple other things. Of course, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I more or less just decided to check out and go elsewhere. I like, I hear scalds. Might as well heal while I'm here. I can look around for bonus friends. But I probably shouldn't. What was the name of the doctor that killed his patient and covered it up? Uh, Tippets. I believe. Yeah, tell me if I run past any loot while I'm here. It's very likely that I'm going to do so. Interesting. We might actually be on the... No, I don't know where we're going. I'm on the trail of something or other. It's locked, all right. Hmm. Well, can I go down? No, it doesn't look like I can go down. 
I found some supplies. It looks like we might be in the right place to figure out who's spying on What's-Her-Face. Uh, but I was going in the wrong direction. It's over there somewhere. Let me see. Finding nothing. But what I'm looking for is in that direction. Oh wait, no, that's that's just the hospital right there. So of course we're moving close to it. Confusing. Yeah, I do hear some scouts over there though. Well do I head for them? Nope, doesn't look like I have the opportunity to do so. I, I like the idea of exploration here. But I don't think it's going to work out great for me if I explore too much. We'll see. But know what year this is set in. I believe this is set in the 19... like 1920s, give or take. Uh, at least that'd be my assumption. Erwin Gunner. Oh, is that straight up mustard gas? Mustard gas. That's gonna hurt. Okay, I'm just gonna let him come back to me. Cause these guys have fire. Do they just have unlimited mustard gas? It just kind of feels like they have unlimited mustard gas. Now, big guy there doesn't seem to have much of a reaction to me. Huh. Yeah, I'm only like level 5 and I'm still rolling these guys. Just cheese tactics seems to be more than effective here. Can I go up? The answer is no. Let's see. We've got the proven ex executioner. What do you call him, vermin? Give me your blood. Thank you very much. Yeah, level doesn't mean much in this game. I mean, they're dangerous, but still. Let's see, I thought you were a friend bot. You're taking people's blood. I am friend bot of the... Of the friendly. These guys, for example, ain't. The hell was that? All right, well I'm dead. Where does that even put me? I have no idea. Okay, so the brawlers are going to be the problem for me. I do a ton of damage to them, but they do a ton of ton of damage back. The main problem is like I will dodge around an enemy as they're swinging and they keep they keep spinning. This is one of those where, like I said, there's no hitbox born. Um, so the en the enemy to compensate for the fact that the you know the AI can't uh, can't adapt as well as I can. Uh, it looks like I'm just kind of back. Yeah, I just respawn. I think I have all of my EXP over. Uh, that's cool. That certainly helps. Of course, I have. Whoa! Hold on. Wow. Okay, this is a much bigger map than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Let's just, uh... 
I really truly have no idea how to find out who's spying on what's her face though. It's probably in one of these buildings, but I d I don't know. Um but yeah, so the enemy can't um can't fight against a person uh you know that's actually like semi skilled in um in these kinds of games. So instead they have like you know, little extra handicaps uh, to help them out. Like turning, for example, if you notice that guy could rotate uh, far faster. Uh, like far faster than like a, a character normally would in some of these games. And so there's the difference. But yeah, it looks like uh, enemies might respawn. So, I'm gonna farm EXP very slowly. There we go. Luckily, I can get most of my blood back just by cheesing these guys a little bit. Man, don't telegraph you're gonna block me that much. That'll do you no favors. Yeah, so I do get blood here. Let's see, so yeah, how am I liking this game? I think it's really good. Uh, obviously it's got its, its, uh, bits here and there that could be improved. Uh, but there aren't that many. For the most part, it, it just feels like a rather... It just feels like a rather good game. At least in my opinion. I don't know. I enjoy it. It's, it's definitely, I would say, a step up from Remember Me. Remember Me had some really neat bits. I will grant, but I, I feel like this is a significant improvement. Oh, hello there. Over there. <laughs> That's it, I missed the, the, uh, the trash can. I'm aware. I just, uh... I got distracted. Stuff was happening. People to fight. Lots of people to fight around here. Interesting. I can, I can go down here. That leads to an area. I probably shouldn't. Like, I'm doing fine because I've got some room to maneuver in here. But mainly I wanted to figure out who is spying on Thelma, but I, I still can't quite figure that one out. Because, yeah, I can go up here. I did... Th I've been up here. And, yes, I believe all of my loot carries over. Like, I don't think I lost anything by... By undoing this. Get any weapons ready! We found one! <laughs> Your blood. Yeah, I rather like the combat. The enemies are interesting too. Little, I mean, a little predictable. But they're fun to fight. I don't know what the hell this guy's problem is. Oops. It's like half the time he reacts to me, the other half the time I don't exist. And that's okay. Okay. 
And mainly the reason why I'm fighting these guys is what little EXP I can get from fighting them. Unfortunately, they ain't worth much. Anything else I miss around here? The answer is no. Yeah, you're not supposed to kill for EXP in this one. Step away, sir. Ah! There we go. Yeah, these guys are a bit of a challenge. There we go. Bit of a challenge, but not an incredible one. And... Yeah, they've got some amount of parts. I think I could just farm these guys for... for materials if I wanted to. Anyway. Let's just... let's just get out of here. Uh... I'm not getting what I need. I don't know how to find out who is spying on Thelma, but, uh, that'll be later. Oh, you can sprint in this game. It looks really goofy. And the frame rate gets a little dodgy when you do it. But you can do it. I'm scuttlebutt. Ooh. Disgust on every street corner. All right, uh, let's see. While we're here, we've got an investigation. How do they fall? I've read the report on Dr. Tippett's concerning the death of Dr. Samuel Connor. I'm not quite convinced right now. Perhaps I could conduct my own investigation to determine the patient's real cause of death. Daily okay, so we got to talk to Gwyneth Brannigan, who's probably this. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Oh. Reed. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. You're not Brannigan. Perhaps I should have considered the offer from that Cadogan I... fellow. Were they directly above me? What? That doesn't make sense. Or, oh, I see, we're just in the area. We have to find them. Oh, okay. That's, that's Nurse Hawkins. As a hospital. That's Pembroke nowadays. Okay, so Focus Home uh, made this game the council, whatever. Focus Home Entertainment publishes games. I don't remember the exact uh, studio that made this one. Also, this hospital routinely restocks, which is kind of nice. apologize when you're feeling better. Dr. Reed, may I help you? Dorothy Crane. I'll see you later, Nurse Crane. Let's see, are you Dr. Tippetts? You kind of look like Dr. Nope, this is just a random doctor. Uh, identifying which is the right doctor is going to be a problem. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland, Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. 
What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father, ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. I am sorry I had to stand up to turn a light on. It's getting dark in here. Ah. <sighs> This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior, a man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes, and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones, and flesh. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. These characters are... <laughs> These characters are very well written. What a blundering idiot. Oh, there's so many characters to talk to, though. Gwyneth Branigan. Yeah, the problem is finding these characters is going to be a nightmare. Because they're just here somewhere. And... We may lack the resources... Until I talk to them, I don't even know what half these characters look like. Let alone, like, where to find them. I guess let's go upstairs. Uh, I mean, worst comes first, we talk to Swansea and we come back later. Maybe I start the next session off uh, talking to uh, Brannigan and Tippets. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. So, people bring up the point, you can use the, uh, blood vision to see who they are. I forget about blood vision on uh, uh, constantly. <laughs> I'll have to try it. I just don't use it that much. 
It may seem strange, but your words have brought me some comfort here. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Let's see. Uh, there's a question. Can you... Ooh, no. Uh, is there a day-night cycle to this game? Sort of, but no. The day-night cycle, I believe, is just a sign signal, like, uh, chapter transitions, kind of. Because we're a vampire. We burn in sunlight. So, no. A warning letter. Pembroke Hospital, 25th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, I must inform you my dearest reservations concerning Dr. Thoreau Strickland and Harvey Fiddick case. Mr. Fiddick has been hospitalized after a severe work injury. He may permanently lose the use of his arm if not treated adequately. Dr. Strickland claims that a surgical procedure may save the man's arm completely. I say it may also severe its functions for good. If complications arise, our young colleague is an audacious and daring surgeon who might prove a great professional in a few years, but now, but for now he lacks the skills to perform such a risky procedure. Need I remind you of the mistakes he made in the past? Since Dr. Strickland refuses to listen to me, I strongly advise you to forbid him to perform such a hazardous experiment. Sincerely, uh, very uh, respectfully, Dr. Waverly Ackeroy. Rare species of vampires. As a scholar and exegete of ancestral writings, I would never insist a enough about the importance of taking legends and ancient folklores into account when searching for hints about hidden or lost secrets. A common mistake is to take what we know for an established truth and use it to discard any contradictory material. For example, we must consider the possibility of an undiscovered species of vampires and the necessity to th rethink what we see as the established truth about the various types of immortals, based on what we know and what we gathered through time. For how many centuries did we consider that vampire was the vernacular term for what we learned to call Ekon, until the day four explorers of the Brotherhood found proof in Siberia that Volkods were a lupine type of vampire, we consider these creatures to be linked to the mythological werewolf. Now we know th it is not true. What about the rest? What about the Rakshasa from my homeland? What about the Chinese Zhangxi or the Pao Chen of southern Chile? And without even leaving the beautiful Great Britain, what about the stories about bat-shaped women sometimes seen flying about or around St. James Church in Louth? What about the creature only identified as a disaster in some obscure testimonies which, tie, which tried to destroy London in 1666 by spreading plague all around the city. What about the Nimrod, the mythical figure of the restless vampire hunter, sometimes described by ancestral British Ekons as a legendary huntsman who only feeds on his prey's blood and could go unnoticed amongst the mortals and immortals? I tell you, my brothers, we can never be too sure of what we could find. If only we could forget for a few minutes what we're supposed to already know. From Unveiling the Night by Usher Talltree, Primate of St. Paul.
So vampires are a real thing in this universe. Yep, very real. Same thing with war, uh, werewolves and a bunch of others. I actually rather appreciate this. Let's see. So yeah, I will be able to find Fiddick and a couple other things. I should probably also be looking for whatever. Okay, so this will make this will make it a lot easier to figure out what's going on. We might also be able to find the people that are spying. Too. So that's Swansea up there. Elma Howcroft. She's healthy. Hippa Hawkins, Dorothy Crane. Unknown. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swans's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course you can't say the same about me since I have not wasted my time courting the press. His eyes are freaking me out a lot. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Tell me, Waverly. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. His eyes are freaking me out. Have you heard about any blackmail going on in this hospital? Blackmail? Nonsense. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. This is ridiculous. 
My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. I don't really like him. I will not let you down, my boy. Oh. Okay, so Fiddix there. We've got two unknowns. Good evening, sir. Let's see. Waverly Ackeroid. Not what I'm looking for, though. Where the heck is the, uh, the other nurse? Cuz... Oh, there, there's Tippets. These might be the doctors, uh, doctor and nurse I'm looking for. I'm gonna quickly grab whatever loot, loot out of here and talk to her. Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he really? It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised, but I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. How are things here? Not good, to say the least. We're struggling against an invisible enemy, more lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Doctor. An invisible enemy? Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here, and we're trying to hold fast, but... How do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Yeah, the voice acting in this is really good. I've yet to run into a voice that I dislike. And more than that, I've run into a lot of voices that I like listening to. These, these voice actors actually are voice actors. I wonder if they're almost kind of like, uh, a, I'd have to look, but it feels like a lot of B-listers that actually know what they're doing, as opposed to a bunch of B-listers that are just given a script. I, I'd love to know the process, because obviously they weren't mo-capped. The, the lip sync on this is atrocious, but, uh, the characters, like, speak as though they were the characters, and, like, that's more than a lot of games could say. The Ackroyd's eyes freak me out, though. Ugh. Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? Hmm. 
This one's tougher. I probably should have talked to Tippets first. Beforehand. Oh, so we know these people are sick. Clay Cox, he's recovering. So we gotta go figure out where Cox is. Uh, to heal him up, because this is kind of important. So don't know what to do with Thomas Elwood. I don't know about this one. I mean, he did straight up kill somebody. To clear Dr. Tippett's name must be the decision of Dr. Swansea. You can't take matters into your own hands. I respect Dr. Swansea's authority and management, but he's no idea what happens here on a daily basis. I did what I had to do. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Yeah, they'll probably fix his eyes. Um, actually, this is always kind of... Oh, we're getting a lot of EXP just by talking to these people and learning secrets. Um, but... Oh, there's, there's Clay Cox. Did I make a... Did I make another fatigue thing? Uh... I don't know if I did. I might have to go make another one. Um, but you know, people were so mad at uh, Bioware for the my face is tired thing, but like playing this game, it's like way worse. But I think the point is just expectations. People expect a lot from uh, Bioware to make, you know, really nice characters. And uh, well, this game, I mean, the characters look nice. Then they start animating, you're like, Mrr. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? I have no time for such triviality, my dear colleague. We're here to save lives. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Brannigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong, Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach.
Nurse Brannigan is worried about you, Doctor. <laughs> she should not have told you that. I will have a word with her. You don't have to blame her for her honesty. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks, maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed the body. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. I will cover for you, Dr. Tippetts. By keeping what happened to Mr. Connor to myself. I... I don't know what to say, actually. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering the situation. Then I can make you this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. Goodbye, Dr. Tippetts. There we go. I feel kind of bad, but at the same time, he definitely looks like a doctor that should probably retire by this point. Hopefully this game saves often. I think it does. You know what? Let's go upstairs and level up before we go, at the very least, because I know my friends are waiting for me. That's hot step. The running in this game looks so goofy. Oh man, especially upstairs. Oh, because the thing is, um, you can run diagonally upstairs and it looks like you're just running on ground. Because there's no animation for running upstairs. It's the same running animation, just slightly verticalized. Uh, <laughs> which looks really goofy. Alright. Uh, let's see. So anyway. I want to just level up. Uh, let's see. Increased blood absorption when using bite in combat. Yeah, let's level this up a bunch. Because I'm going to be using that a bunch. Uh, let's see. Blood capacity might not be a bad idea. Damage inflicted by bite, that might be good. Otherwise, we've got syringes, number of bullets I can carry. Don't care too much about the combat stuff. Uh, you know what? Actually, let's go over here. Autophagy. Can I upgrade this? I can. 250 healing. Yeah, let's go with the 250 healing. Because I'm probably going to be using that a bunch. Nope. And confirm. Your legs seem to move faster than you do. Yeah! It's a weird run. It doesn't look right. Hello. Major district events. Every night, the consequence of your actions may improve or degrade the district health status. and also be degraded due to diseases spreading among citizens. The more lives you take, the unhealthier a dead district becomes. If a district's health status drops below the critical threshold, it'll plunge into chaos. It's for you to decide a district's fate. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go through, find everybody, and treat everybody. Uh, before I rest again. Well, I'm fine with that, honestly. We've got a whole lot to do. A whole lot to do. I gotta even find some of these people. Oh, Pillar of the Community. That makes sense. Well, we're gonna have to do some exploration. But for now, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go play the forest for at least a little while. But yeah, note to self. Uh, work my butt off and... Don't, don't just, uh, do things. I mean, for the most part, I don't think things are going to drop too much. Especially if I start finding sick people and then, you know, administering things. I like that. 